Hello everyone, this is the Mining Geologist and I'm back again with another very exciting and very informative tutorial. I know it's been a while since the last video, but here I am back again with another series in which we are going to use the latest AI technologies and apply these tools to our mining industry, whether it is mining engineering, geology or geoscience in general. If this is something that is interesting for you, make sure to watch this full video. Okay, so one of the best tools that I'm sure that everyone have been using uh, recently, and I've been doing so also for the couple of past months which which is chat gpt but i believe that you know why i didn't share any videos about chat gpt because i think that there are a lot of channels already covered that in which you can use chat gpt like to summarize documents to write emails and do stuff like that and uh at some point i wanted to cover that how you can use that or the api of chat chat gpt to like uh create your own chat bot or whatever but that's not something that it's really interesting for us as uh, geoscientists but now there's these new features in chat gpt and i'm sure that's going to help a lot of you a lot so other than writing your emails and uh, doing your proposals or summarize your documents. Now you can do a lot more with ChatGPT. So let me show you some examples uh, what I'm talking about. So as you can see that I have in front of me here, I have QGIS and I have this shape file and I can go and export this one to a .shp file, which is basically a shape file. But if you've been following the channel, you know that whenever I want to use a, you know, a shape file, with uh like for example in python i don't like to export that as shp because if i do so we'll have like four files and i need to find a way to manage all of these files uh together especially if i'm going to upload that to like a streamlit application or whatever so the best way to uh use these is to export them as a geo package which is basically going to uh show you the same things in, inside that shape file but you have just one file instead of four so to do so you can go and export this save feature as and instead of shape file you can pick geo package and you'll have just one file so i did that and i have that geo package in here so what i can do is i can go and drag and drop that to um, chat gpt but before doing so make sure that you are in the plus version like some of you might be disappointed by this but the plus version is a paid version but trust me 20 bucks a month is nothing with compared to what you can do with this tool so i really uh highly recommend for you guys to go and get that plus uh version if you still want to use chat gpt for like summarizing documents and like basic coding and stuff like that i think the free version that uses the model 3.5 is enough but if you want like better like um conversational like um uh, capabilities or maybe coding or you want to use these tools that i'm going to show you you need to get that um that plus version which gives you access to the gpd4 model and in this one, if you notice that if I hover in here, so this one I have nothing, but here I have the default, which is basically what everyone is using. Uh, it's basically you can chat with it, ask questions about coding or whatever. We have the uh, plugins, which are, if you click on this one, you'll notice that you have a bunch of plugins. For example, I use this one, I really like it, which is like a browsing feature for ChatGPT. Uh, I'm not sure if, you are aware of this or not but like the the information inside chat gpt uh models whether 3.5 or 4 they're limited to 2021 so if you ask chat gpt a question about something happened in 2022 
you're not going to have your answer. So uh, this one is going to bypass that limitation, which is this plugin that you give it a question and ChatGPT is going to browse like Google or Bing or whatever. Look at the latest data and try to summarize that for you and gives you like the sources for that for these informations so you can go and check whether it is like right or not so i really like this feature so maybe you want to go and do like a proposal and you have the information about this company that is like maybe this company they started it in just 2022 so you can go and give it a link to that company and it's going to bring the informations and like help you with that proposal whatever it is but this is not why we are here today. We're going to use the code interpreter, which is in the beta uh, uh, version currently. But trust me, it is really uh, it's really good. So for this one, basically what you can do is you have like a small server in the background dedicated for you for this session. I think you have like about two gigabyte of RAM. Not sure about the graphics. But it's basically like a, like, um, a very uh, s small computer to run the code for you in the background. So, and the good thing about this one is you can upload files. So by files, it doesn't have to be any kind of file. So it could be a CSV, a PDF, an image, or a geo package like what we are going to do today. So basically, I'm going to go and drag and drop this one to ChatGPT. And you can see that I've loaded that stockpile there, .geo package. I don't have the, the ability to do that in here or with the default version. So, and now I can go and like uh, tell Jet, Chat GPT what I want to do exactly. So, for example, I'm going to say this is a shape file. I'm going to say it is a shape file, even though that it is a geo package. I want to calculate the area of the polygon. And let's see if ChatGPT is able to do that. So basically, ChatGPT is going to read the file, see, look at the extension, and try to think about what is the library that is required to, uh, you know, or that allows you to look at the, um, look at that specific file and try to read it. And then, so you can see we've got like question here. Let's look at the end. Do you have a prepared you uh, in mind or not? If not, I can choose that is commonly used for, okay, use, I'm gonna say use the common, common one. Okay, and you can see, so if you have like an exact coordinate system that you wanna use, um, you can go and pass in that information to ChatGPT and ChatGPT is going to use that one. And if you have like a coordinate system coded in the file itself, ChatGPT will be able to uh, determine that. And uh, you can see that I've got this one here and you can see basically this is the, uh, this is the area and this is in kilometers. And I'm going to say now, can you plot that poly that polygon for me and ChatGPT is going to try and plot that polygon so you can see this is exactly the polygon that we uh, have now i'm going to say for example maybe this is an area that we are interested in like for like i don't know like for drilling or whatever so i'm going to say for example could you fit a grid of points spaced by 10 meters in the poly polygon. Okay, and let's see if uh, ChatGPT can do that or not. So you can see that ChatGPT look at your instruction and try to divide that into like multiple tasks. Like the first one is to look at the bounding box of the polygon, then generating the points, and then ChatGPT is going to filter the points inside the polygon only. So, and you can see it did a really great job of doing that. And you can see that we have the points in here. So now let's try to challenge ChatGPT. Okay. Could you now, could you 
add some random values to these points between between 0, 0 0.1 let's say and 10 and then interpolate them using IDW and show me the resulting raster. Let's see if ChatGPT is going to be able to do that. So basically I'm asking ChatGPT to like add some random numbers to these points as if they are grades or whatever and then using IDW to interpolate these points in the entire polygon and then display the resulting raster. So one thing I missed to show you is that you see this one that finished working and show work. You can go to this one and actually see the code which is using in the background which is a Python code. So if for some reason, for example, uh, Chad GPT was not able to run the code because you have like a big data set or whatever because like I mentioned you have only access to two gigabyte of RAM you can go and try the code in your machine and probably get the results and upload them back to ChatGPT and so on. And you can see now ChatGPT have done a really great results. Uh, like you look at this one, generate a bunch of points. You can see here from the legend that the points are between 0 and 10. And because they are random and we didn't specify like how random they are, you can see that we have this noisy grid of points that have been interpolated using IDW inside that polygon, which is really amazing. In just a matter of seconds, we were able to do all of this. So now maybe we can, you can see now that ChatGPT also recommends to us what is the next step. Maybe you want to export that as a GeoDiff and use that in QGIS or whatever. Maybe you want to see like other interpolation methods or we can ask him or ask it, can you give me a CSV file of the points with the columns X, Y, and we don't have a Z, and the inter, I mean like with the, and the uh, random value, okay? And now also with this code interpreter, the good thing is that you can ask for files. So ChatGPT can actually generate these files for you. And you can click on this one and you will be able to download that to your system and use it the way that you want. So this is going to change the way that we do things. So I want you to try this option with uh, ChatGPT. You can use, for example, a CSV file instead of a geo package and ask it to like visualize, I don't know, like some different charts like histogram or whatever and like try to do like interpretation for you. I think if like in the future this uh, code interpreter will be like uh, available in the ChatGPT API, I think there will be like a lot of tools that uh, will be created around that and I think I will do uh, something also with this tool. Uh, currently it's only available in the uh, browser version but I think once it is available uh, as an inside their API it's going to be really amazing and I will keep you guys posted on that. Now the downside of this is basically if you're using OpenAI and ChatGPT basically you agree that the data are uh, can be used with OpenAI like for training their model or for anything like that. And we know that in our industry, these data are confidential, whether they are like for our mine or like for a client, it's not a good thing to uh, share this data with, uh, you know, with, with uh, OpenAI or any other companies without actually asking that uh, from your client or from uh, whoever uh, manages that data. But there are ways, like for example, if you're using some um, coordinates data, you can randomize the coordinates, you can cr create like, um, 
you know you can do like a translation you can change the the position of these coordinates or you can play around with the grades add some random values in which you store in a local file and then you can use that to get the, the right values or you can uh, if it's data without coordinates, try not to mention what is the project, what is the location, so that it, it's not going to be linked in the background. Or there are other things that you might have your own ChatGPT locally, your own AI model that you can use locally. And if you are interested in this thing, which is something that you can do right now, I would like to see... Who are the people who stick, stick to the end of the video and I'm, I'm really interested in this one. So comment below if you want to see that in the next video. And if I get, um, I don't know, let's say 20 or 25 people interested in this topic, I will upload that in the next video, which is probably in the next week. So I hope this was informative and was interesting for you. And see you in the next video.